Sometimes when we're working on a program, even though we are following the denied recipe and we have finished steps one through four, when we get to step five, the function definition can still be tricky to come up with. In that case, often the table method can help. Say that we want to write a program to convert temperatures from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Let's follow the design recipe. So the first step is to write down our data definitions. The second step is to write a signature, purpose statement, and header. The third step is to write some examples. And here we are going to use check expect to express those examples so that we get automatic testing for free when we get to step six. Step four is to write down a template for a function starting with a header. And in order to write the template, we need to compile a sort of inventory of what inputs we have available to use. In this function, we only have one input, so the template simply reminds us to use that number. And now we get to step five of the design recipe. It's not completely clear how to write a formula, a program that will turn 32 into zero, that's the first example, and 212 into 100. That's the second example. All we know from the template is that somehow we have to use the input number f. This is where the table method can help. To follow the table method, we need to make a table. You might use a spreadsheet to make a table. You might use a piece of paper, or you might do it on a whiteboard if you're uh, working on this project with another person. So the columns of this table are inputs. Our function only has one input, so I'm just going to put a column heading F here. And then in each row of the table, each horizontal row of the table, I'm going to put an example. So for example, our first example that we gathered in step three of the design recipe would become here, 32. And the second example is where the input f is 212. So that's uh, some of the table. Another important part of the table is that to the right, we want to put out what we expect out of the function we are trying to design. In other words, what we want. So for example, for this example where f is 32, we want zero to come out. And for the second example, where f is 212, we want 100 to come out. So far, so good. This is just taking our examples from step three of the design recipe and putting them in a tabular form so that we can better see how each example has an f and a want. Now comes the part that's the table method. Let's try to write a formula that gets us closer from what we have on the left to what we want on the right. What we have is f, we have numbers like 32, and what we want are numbers like 0. So we might think, well, how do we get from 32 to 0? It seems that you know the numbers get smaller, they tend to get smaller, so maybe we could subtract 32. So the formula for that in the beginning student language will be if we say left parent subtract and then a space and then f and then 32. Okay, so that's a formula. Um, and uh, using this formula, we have to fill in the cells in the table. So for example, if f is 32, then f minus 32 is 0. If f is 212, then f minus 32 is 180. Okay. And then every time we fill in a column, we have to compare the column we just filled in against the column of what we actually want. So we see that in the first example, our result matches what we want. So we're happy about that. But in our second example, it doesn't match. We want 100, we, we get 180, it's not quite good enough. Okay, But it's a good try. So keep that scratch paper around because maybe we could try something else based on what we already tried to get even closer to what we want. Okay, so we might say, look, how, how can we take zero and keep it zero, 
but take 180 and make it 100. Well, maybe we could divide the number by something. Okay, that would be a reasonable try. Okay, so what does it mean to divide? It means, well, love per I'm going to put divide, but then the input to division is actually something that we already have. Right, so I'm actually going to copy the formula for what we already have and then put it in this new formula that we're still working on because we want to divide the result we just got by, let's say, 1.8. And that means dividing 0 by 1.8, which gives us 0, and dividing 180 by 1.8, which gives us 100. And now when we compare what we have against what we want, in both the first example and the second example, they match. So we're done. We could actually take the formula that we tried that worked on both of our examples and put it in our program. This is no longer just a template. We've actually filled in the template and we could even use Dr. Racket to run our automatic tests to reconfirm that our tests pass. Okay, so that's the table method. It's making a table where each column is an input except when you get to the rightmost column, it is what we want. And each row is an example. And we keep adding new columns based on what the template tells us we should use. The template reminds us we should use F. So we use F. We keep trying different ways to use F. We use what we got in previous attempts in further attempts until we finally get a column where the results we get match what we wanted in the first place. And then we're done because we have figured out how to write down the function definition. And that's step five of the design recipe. Another way to try out the table method is to use this tool called beginning student tables on the web. We developed this tool here at IU. This tool allows us to follow the design recipe. So let's start again with the uh, first step uh, to write down a data definition. We also need to write down a signature, a purpose. And instead of writing down a header, we just need to name the input to this function. There's only one input to this function. As before, I'm going to call it F for Fahrenheit. OK, that's steps one and two. Let's continue to step three. And this time, I'm going to put the examples I gather in step three directly into a table format. So if f is 32, then we want 0. If f is 212, then we want 100. Okay, so instead of typing check specs or comments into Dr. Racket, I'm typing my examples into a table. And now I can start to try out different formulas. The template in step four reminds me that I should try to use f. So again, I could try to use f by subtracting 32 from it. And the tool computes the results of this formula automatically and shows me where the results match and don't match the result I want. And now I could take this formula and use it to build a larger formula, like one involving division. And this one works for both examples. And I can still add new examples at this point. And I could make sure that they match what I expect. OK, so that's the beginning student tables tool. One nice thing about this tool is that if you go down to the bottom and check the box that says showed combined program, it actually produces a piece of code that is almost what you could use as a function definition. If you look at this function definition that's produced by the tool, it's not really a function definition because it's actually defining the function f to c with two bodies. It's not sure whether we want to use the subtraction, which doesn't work by itself, or the division and subtraction, which works. So when we copy this code, back into Dr. Racket, we need to remember to get rid of those intermediate tries that really did help us come up with a final solution, 
but we don't want the computer to actually run those intermediate tries when it is actually trying to just convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. Okay, so that's a beginning student table tool, and I invite you to use this. It's available on the web. Anyone can use it.